What's up, what's up, what's up, my friends? Welcome. Get ready. Grab a snack and a bevy. It's time for you and I to have a chit chat. Straight up facts. Tell it like it is. Laugh till you pee your pants. Cry because you probably needed to. And I can't promise, and I'm not going to throw any F bombs, but I can promise you'll feel a lot better after listening. It's time to get personal, one on one, down and dirty, and have a coffee talk. Buckle up. Let's go. Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to Coffee Talk. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I got tons to talk about today. And I will say the bride was a, dis- a little bit disappointed, my bride friend, when when I didn't do the wedding stuff yes, last week. So there's that. I'm doing it this week, Michelle. I'm doing it this week. Um, all right. First off, I just wanted to talk about how I... <laughs> I'm jumping right in this week, folks. Um, I just want to talk about my complete, utter despise for social media. I literally used to be on it all the time. And now I do it kind of to like go through the motions. But I'm telling you guys, I'm struggling with the social media. I got to keep my algorithm up. I know I got to do all the things. I want to share stuff with my friends and family, like abroad and stuff and here. But I... I am just kind of shocked at some of the stuff that happens on that just transposes like in comments. I'm totally okay with people having opinions, stuff like that. If, if, if your opinion's different than mine, cool. You do you, I do me. I'm not going to like hate on your post. I just keep scrolling. That's pretty much what everybody should do. So I wanted to bring up a post that was in our local mom's group. I, I, I can't, you can't make this stuff up anymore. So a mom had posted in our local group because school started for the public schools. And she said, I'm a little concerned because essentially the school bus is like tearing down the street this morning and then had to like basically lock up its brakes to take a stop at the end of the street. And, you know, should she report it? Is it like, it concerned her at the amount of speed that the bus was taking in a neighborhood in between stops. Now, I'm not gonna even go into my opinion yet, but I will start off by stating that she was widely supported by the majority of moms there who took their emotions out of it and just gave an opinion like, if you can get the the bus number and you know you you, you obviously know the route, um, report it to the district office, right? So, and and she was you know continuing and 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 answering other people, um, but then <laughs> there was one comment, and I'm just going to state what the comment said. And I'm going to leave it there for you guys to settle it in. But the comment was, do you have a radar gun? Question mark. So, um, instantly, I know this thread's blowing up. (laughs) But then I look at the person who typed it. And... This person is very focal, vocal in our group. Sorry, I put an F in front of it for whatever reason. Vocal in this group. Um, I like her. I think we may be Facebook friends outside of this group. I don't really know. I, I, I don't know who the hell I'm friends with anymore on social media. But um, I just thought to myself... Fuck, really? You're just going to go in and fucking just unload straight off the bat. It, I don't understand. Let me continue before I even go into the rant. So 
I want to, to so the mom, the, the OP, okay, original poster, okay, so we'll just call her OP. So the OP basically states like, um, no, I don't need a radar gun, like I, whatever. And so this, this exchange goes back a couple posts, essentially the OP's like, are you calling me a liar? Like I, I, I'm not now in all essence, the way this woman responded to the OP, she was challenging her. It was sarcastic and it was uncalled for in a conversation that is going to gear to be healthy. And this is where we have disconnected in today's world. Because I sat on this post. I'm like, don't do it, Denise. Don't do it. Um, and then finally, I just said, hey, OP, I totally get this. I live on a street inside the subdivision that backs up to the farm. You have to get to a street to get to my street. Meaning that we are not off the main road. We are kind of like a little half little U street, real small, in the back of my subdivision. And I will tell you, in the seven years I've been in this building, these buses just fucking roll down the street. Like, they are tearing it up. I've been driving for 50, I, well, I'm 54. So I've been driving since I was 18, and I have zero tickets or any kind of offensive. I have a perfect driving record. I can pretty much gauge speed, okay? I also drove a diesel car. This comes into play later. Can I just tell you that this person also challenged, so I, I was just like, I can't right now. So I felt like OP was kind of getting beat up by this person. And I think sometimes there just needs to be like a, moment in between some of these threads because it was just the, the comment itself was uncalled for and should have never been put there but i will say based on past posts within this group over a long period of time this woman is an authority on everything with respects to the cool school system in her mind let me let me let me preface that in her mind she is a professional on all things school system or locally, okay? So we'll put that out there. And I know that not because I want to judge her, but because I could pretty much just Google her name in this group and she will have multiple similar, very short responses and we'll go back and forth with people. Now, I get this. I'm not dogging on this person who made the sarcastic comment. Why? This used to be me. It used to be me. Okay? I would bet 80% this person is miserable inside. She's fucking miserable. Okay? And you're not going to make any more friends telling people who are concerned about a speeding school bus, do you have a fucking radar gun? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, um... There's like a thousand things you could have said. That's not fucking one of them. Okay. Um, we have, as a society, lost the ability to fucking speak to people. We have completely lost it. You would never go up to someone at work and HR comes down to your desk, human resources, for those of you who don't know, and they say, oh, excuse me, Denise, um, this morning uh, we saw you on camera, on the security camera, and it appeared that you were going in a pretty quick inside the parking lot, and it would violate our safety terms. And I look at HR and say, do you have a radar gun? Yeah. How do you think that would fly at work? Right? If we wouldn't speak to someone... And, and, and let me explain why. Let me let me continue this example. You wouldn't speak to your HR department rep that way because there would be possible repercussions. Most likely, HR is going to be like, we don't need a radar gun. We have a camera. You're going to be written up for an occurrence. Possibly, not possibly. I don't know. This is just an example, people. Relax. I don't know if people get written up for speeding in the parking lots at work. Who knows? 
It's just an example. And, but there are repercussions. So there is a very high chance that someone isn't going to respond to someone like that because there is an authority situation versus a uh, an employee versus a uh, corporate mentality between the two, okay? A repercussion could happen that could involve your job or being written up or something that involves threatening your security of a job, all right? But somehow, because of internets, okay, <laughs> the internets and the world wide web. Okay. And X and, uh, you know, Facebook and, you know, we have become, a lot of people have become super brave that wouldn't be super brave in public. We also have, have suddenly lost all mannerism and politeness in how we speak to people. Because in all honesty, I'm just going to put myself into the picture. If I was having a conversation at the park with a group of moms and I said, oh my God, the other day there was a school bus driving and it was driving so quick down the block, you can hear them jam their brakes on to like pick up the kids at the end of the block. Like, uh, I'm sorry, that's pretty dangerous. Like, what do they do this all the time? Is it just because it's the beginning of the year and they're trying to work out their schedules? And all the moms were like, oh, yeah, you know, you should report that. This and we're all having the conversation. And then one mom says, do you have a radar gun? You know what's happening? I'm like, get the fuck out of here right now. Do I have a radar gun? Do I look like a fucking cop? Do you have kids? I would be like, are you serious right now? And she would be in a situation where other people also would be staring at her and there would be that dynamic would click back in where there are repercussions to speaking to people without respect, right? But somehow, as soon as you toss yourself in a fucking chat room or on the internet or in social media, Suddenly, everybody's got balls the size of Texas, and they say the most inappropriate things. And then they're fucking shocked and dismayed when someone calls them out on that shit. So I just wanted to, I'm just going to read my response. I'm not going to re read anybody's word for words because I don't have approval for that. It's not necessary for the conversation. But I'm, I'm just going to, now I got to see if I can find this. Um... But while I'm uh, talking, they probably buried it. They probably were like, let's get rid of this fucking thing. Uh, oh, and I'll read you because there's like more to this later. So anyway, the, um, oh, dang it. I can't find it. This, uh, oh, here it is. Okay. So I, my response to the OP was that, you know, my son doesn't go to district school, but the buses are always zooming down my street and I'm way in the back by farm. They definitely going faster than they should. I've actually complained before, nothing changes. Because this isn't to me, I've been here for seven years. This is not a beginning of the school. They're trying to make their thing. Bus drivers in this area, the ones on my street, drive like assholes, okay? Like I can literally sometimes feel them when I'm out on the driveway and they're whizzing past and they have no business being down such a small little tiny street that I'm on next to a farm driving. It, it's literally just only like maybe 16 houses on my block and farm. So I don't get why they need to drive that way. Okay. And everyone, oh, it may be fast because buses are so big. Um, the, the, the drivers wouldn't put their job on the line by driving over the speed limit. That's bullshit. St I am so tired of people in the district and in schools. I, I get the teachers are awesome. Okay. I'm not saying that, but take your personal fucking feelings out. All these people that defended the bus driver are all fucking people that work for the district. I'm sorry. Do you know what? There are tons of moms that defended district school bus drivers. And then later that year across the country, those bus drivers have gotten into fucking accidents because of their 
misjudgments. So, you know, should we just all let it go and then we'll just wait until the accident happens and then we'll be concerned? Because that seems a little fucking sketch. It's not okay. So, you know when the brakes are going and stuff like this, right? So lots of people basically backed up. Um, uh, this person, um, the op- the the the, 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 the person that commented, do you have a radar gun posted numerous times about how a bus driver is not going to risk his or her license to drive recklessly as you claim. Okay. So you're calling the OP a fucking liar. And, and I'm sorry, but you don't know anything about the fucking bus drivers. You don't know if they have addictions. You don't know if they have pill addictions. We live in the fucking upper end uh, suburbs. Half of the moms here are all fucking pilled out. Or drinking wine every fucking day. Don't tell me about what you think or think. You don't know all those people. You don't know anything about them. That's how accidents happen. Get the fuck out of here right now. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So another person said, listen, she spoke with, you know, the kids, her kids, and that, yes, that the children on the bus, including their kids, when they were all getting off, were stating that their bus driver was driving super fast. And then added and I kudos to her, they must be liars too. I'm like, right? And then she went on to tell everybody about how she didn't call anybody a liar, a radar gun's the only one to prove someone's speeding. Absolutely not. People are trained to know when speeding goes by. Like you are fucking out of line. This lady is like, I've lived here for 30 years and I've only had to call transportation once when a bus didn't arrive. And then goes on to be like, you know, now she's going to put her mercy fucking pants on. If you feel it's that people's lives are in immediate danger, call 911. Stop it right now. Like, stop it. It's like she knows everything. And someone said, you know, listen, that is absolutely false. You know? Common sense is helps all of this shit just stop. But it was, it was pretty, it was pretty ridiculous. So any of the way, um, she winds up responding. Um, I, I basically, so this is what I wrote her. I said, Hey, I know you love this district, my friend, and I'm coming from a kind place, but these drivers back in my street, have no business going the speeds they are. I've been here seven years and it's a consistent thing. You can actually hear them accelerating. OP has a valid point with safety of children in mind. And I know you are a kind and caring person and surely can see her attentions were not filled with malice against the drivers, but for the overall safety of the kiddos. And then she wrote, I'm not sure where you ever got the idea that I love the district. Well, fuck, man. You comment several fucking times defending them on everything in this group. A simple search in this group will verify that. That is so untrue. I have knowledge of many things from the district to the village that I pass on. Yes. You will hear, uh, uh, you will hear A is accelerate. I don't know, I I, typo, because most likely she's typing because she's pissed off. You will hear A is accurate, accelerate, as it is not quite vehicle, it is not a quiet vehicle as many diesel buses are. As many diesel buses. Diesel vehicles are louder than gas vehicles. I am not here to argue, but yo, pass info on. Okay, first off, I drove a fucking diesel vehicle, like I fucking can't. I'm going to be 55 years old and I have somebody fucking explaining to me with a diesel fucking vehicle. We live in a high end fucking district that has tons of money. If they are not servicing their diesel vehicles, I want to know where the fuck my tax money's going because I not sending my kid to district. I'm paying for a private school because the district is insane. So where else are they blowing my money? Like, you know what I'm saying? What the hell is going on? 
<laughs> so I just wrote, you know what? Sometimes it's all in the delivery. That's why this old gal is not a fan of texting. You have a wonderful day despite the rain today because it rained on the day this happened. I go and probably may want to think in the future about starting off on a with a question, do you have a radar gun? And then think that's not going to insituate like a protest. And then I refuse to answer her back. Like, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to go back and forth. But it's just insane. So she keeps going back and forth on this and just, she she knows everything on this post. It is crazy, okay? So here's me. I already took myself out of my local township group because they were fucking mental. And now I'm like, now I can't even be in the mom's group. <laughs> like, what's this? You guys are insane. I don't know where you ever got. I'm a friend of the district. I'm like, well, I don't know. I just searched your name and uh, like 60 million fucking things came up. That's that's how. All defending the district. So there's that. You know what I'm saying? Like, please shut up. Why have we gotten to the point where people can just fucking talk to anybody the way anybody wants to talk to, but then they get all shocked when they get clapped back. You can't be, like, this woman is actually completely clueless as to why people are clapping back on the fact that she literally commented with the concern from this mom about children, okay, (laughs) her children, do you have a radar gun? And then now she's a cop, so she was able to explain a radar gun. She's also an expert on diesel engines. She's also an expert on school bus drivers. Like, it's like, stop, sit down, and check your fucking self before you wreck your fucking self. I don't understand this shit, people. I just do not. So do not fucking randomly type on people's comments shit that's weird. Don't fucking insult people. If you don't agree with what they posted, keep fucking scrolling. Don't offend them. I hate when people are like, you look so beautiful that way, but I would have never, you don't need the makeup. You had a lot of makeup on. Shut up. Shut the hell up. Why do we do this? I just want to state for the record that a fucking school bus just zipped by so fast That Buster missed it. He just saw the tail end. He's standing at the window now with his face on the ledge. (laughs) And I rest my case. All right, let's move on to weddings. Um, So a couple weeks ago, I went to my friend Michelle's wedding. It was a beautiful wedding. It was outside and it was this cute little country club riding club. And it was just really nice. It was very eloquent. It was very Michelle. We had a wonderful time. Okay, here we go with Buster. Anyway, so he's probably going to just sit here and cry now because my neighbor's out across the street. God forbid. Anyway, um, so yeah, so it was a beautiful occasion. And Mr. Sith and I got to go out to a wedding, get all dressed up like we used to do. Um, We didn't used to do that. We only get dressed up when we go to weddings and ours. <laughs> In all honesty, we really need to fucking date more. Um, We tried it for a while and then we got too busy, right? Who else does that? Yeah, we need to stop that shit. But um, I found a really nice dress that I loved. It fit me um, and uh, (laughs) it fit me. I ordered from a company in UK because they had really nice dresses for plus size gals. And a lot of times they don't actually make the dresses for plus size. They just make a dress that's size four and a size 18 and they think it fits right. It doesn't. So when you buy from an actual plus size store, you have room for arms, you have room for boobs. We don't all have big waists. So I I had a nice waist and then room for my big ass. So there's that. And it was nice. It was floor length. It's really hard to find nice plus size curvy dresses. So found it. Um, I ordered three things and, um, I liked them all. So I was like, yay, they all look nice and fit. And I had to do some alterations on the other ones. Another school bus just went by, but this one is going the speed limit. I'm just saying, okay, that said, so we were like, okay, 
Um, we're going to look great. I've had a pair of shoes. I was totally lupus flaring at the time. So I knew that I would be even worse because the actual ceremony was outside. It wasn't long. It was like 30 minutes long. Very nice. One of their family members of the groom was the reverend. Um, it was very, very nice. Um, uh, he is of Filipino descent and it was just really, really, really nice. She had, or he had, the greatest, I don't remember, how sad is this? I can't even tell you right now. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, wait, wait, Um, I don't know. I'm going to just say that. Anyway, they had the greatest, just the way they talked and how they spoke in their speech was beautiful, okay? But <laughs> I really love the fact that she was like, when, for some people here, um, or he, I'm sorry, I don't know. Michelle, I feel like an idiot right now. I can't remember who married you. Oh my gosh, whatever. So anyway, they proceeded to sit there and say, some of you here will associate weddings with like one thing. And immediately before they continued to talk, I was like, princess bride. And she was like, he, she, they, I don't know, uh, princess bride. And I'm like, stop it. And then immediately I start with the speech impediment <laughs> and that's how they read the whole, like the whole thing in princess bride. I was dying. I'm like, see, this is awesome. And her, I believe, uh, the groom, no, it was the bride, my friend Michelle's sister's daughter played violin. Beautiful. I'm like, beautiful. Homeschooled. Geek, geek. Um, gotta love the homeschoolers. Um, I know I feel I'm a little denial, guys, about the homeschool thing right now. I'm still gonna do stuff here, so I feel like I'm still homeschooling and just paying somebody else a shit ton of money to do the rest. Just saying. Cause it's a shit ton of money. Um then we get placed at the friend's table, which I will say that out of all the tables I've been to in a wedding, this is this was by far the best location. Now, we I love that we were up against windows because now I don't I have like room to move, right? <laughs> it's a wedding peeps. Um, and I love that it was only one table between me and the bride and the groom. So like you could see them interact. And can I just tell you? I've known my friend Michelle for quite, it's almost a decade. Holy crap, Michelle, we've, we've known each other for more than a decade. Wow. Anyway, um, it's just amazing to me because I knew this is a second marriage for both of them. They met in their Christian divorce group, which there was a cute little antidote about from the best man who also comes from that group and the maid of honor who also came from that group about how they all got in trouble because they weren't supposed to date <laughs> each other. Uh, cause I guess it's more than just Michelle and Randy. So there's that. Um, but it was, um, I was at the friends table and it was a sweet location. And the friends table is always fun because these are all Michelle's friends from, that I have heard from or met for brief periods of time or long ago or whatnot, but I have heard of all of them, right? Now I'm going to tell you straight out, I'm not saying names. I'm just going to go around the table because I'm telling you fucking dynamics at a wedding never change. They are the same no matter what year you go, no matter what decade it is, no matter who's getting married, family member, friend, you're a plus one the dynamics stay the same. And this table did not disappoint. And I even labeled myself. I, like I got a label this time, me and Mr. Sith, because I wasn't the label I normally am. And that's probably because I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> I'm like, mm, you know. So I'm gonna start around the table. So first we had what I call the work guest. This person works with the bride. It's not going to be hard for her to guess this. <laughs> Just saying. Although I think we had two of them that worked with the bride. They were like back to back. So, but he is a boss. 
How do I know? Because he wore a suit the whole time. He never took off his jacket. He never drank alcohol. He drank water and soda only. He stayed even keel with all his conversations and he never got up to do anything but use the restroom and replenish his soda and speak to the bride, period, okay? He had conversation with almost everyone at the table, so he's the manager and he knows how to work a table or work a room of people and control it. Because when he spoke, everybody listened. That's the boss, period, okay? Next to him was a single, okay? So he's a single, then there's another single, right? I don't know. Um, I didn't get a whole lot to talk to this woman because she sat directly across from me at the table, which is difficult when you have a hearing impediment, right? So I can't hear out of my left ear. It's we're in a crowded, you know, banquet hall with music playing. I can't even read lips at this point. Okay. So very nice. Uh, stayed under the radar because she's there. She's by herself. She doesn't want to cause too much of a stir. And she also is just trying to have friendly, you know, the person who's just trying to have a little conversation with everyone, best behavior, no outlandish behavior, just like kind of the playing it even kind of gal, right? She doesn't want to make a fool of herself. She's enjoying the wedding and she's making the best that she's there by herself. Boom. Okay. Now we go to the other side of the boss. We have another employee. Okay. He's not sure. They are like confident, but not confident because he's not sure whether or not he's dressed. There's always that person who's not sure how they should dress for a wedding. This is that couple. So it's him and his wife, pleasant people. Okay. Had conversations with them dressed, but not dressed for a wedding. They're dressed maybe for like a really nice boat launch. Okay. Uh, short sleeve, button down shirt. Uh, well-pressed, all of that, um, but not quite wedding attire, okay? Maybe super casual beach attire, like a wedding, a, uh, like a beach wedding, but but so you could tell they were a little like, mm, we underdressed, but also super comfortable in the fact that they are there. He's a friend of, and it's like he doesn't have too much to lose because he used to work with one of the bride or the grooms. I'm pretty sure, obviously it was the bride. So that was that. Sorry, I'm like, I need some water here. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. And then we're going to move to the couple next to me. And another couple, these are the couple who's the Mutt and Jeff. They are comfortable with each other. They've been together forever. And everyone, if you look at them, you wouldn't even tell, like, you're like, how the hell do two people like that meet? He's this big, burly guy. Not fat, just huge. He's huge, right? He loves to eat. They're real comfortable with each other. They share food. Why are they sharing food? Because she doesn't want to eat too much, but he does, but doesn't want to seem like he's eating too much because he's the big guy and he doesn't want to be pointed out. This happens at every wedding. Okay. She was super kind to talk to. They have a dance. They wait for their song to come on. They get up and they dance. They make the rounds. They go to the bar together. They don't do one at a time. Whereas the last couple, the beach wedding couple, he got all of their beverages and brought them back to the table. She continued to entertain. This couple, they're comfortable with each other. They are one unit. They got up and did everything together. They danced together. They took pictures of the bride to, with the, each other together. And then when their song wasn't on, they came back and they entertained the table together. Okay. They were, they fit like a puzzle piece. Okay. So that's that couple, right? So Mutt and Jeff, but a puzzle piece. They've been together forever. They're comfortable. They ain't going nowhere, right? And then you got Miss me and Mr. Seth. The, eh, where do they know the bride couple, right? Quiet, kind of observing the room. There's always the people who kind of sit back and chill. And I'd be like, don't you want to just get out there and do stuff and dance? And, nah. and, and, they, and they would be like, no, we're good. Have a good time. We're watching. We enjoy watching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is what I became. I became the opposite of what I normally am. So we sat, mind you, I was dying. I was hurting bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank God. Good. Good clothes, good shoe choices, Denise. You did well. Um, 
And Mr. Uh, Sith got up and he, Mr. Carl, <laughs> Mr. Sith got up, got um, all the drinks. Uh, we didn't drink. So um, we actually split a drink to see what the margarita tasted like. Cause they, that was like their, um, their feature drink. And we didn't finish it just cause we don't drink, but um, we wanted to have a little something, something for toasting and whatnot. Um, but he got up and got me all my cucumber water and all that kind of stuff. It was really nice. I was like, sweet, you know, and he had some wine and, um, so we, it that was us. Right. And then you move to the couple next to us. They know a little bit more about everybody, right? They have known the bride for a while. They're not family, right? They're neighbors. They see everything, but she moved. So everybody's asking them about who the new neighbors are. And they're like, we don't know. They're just redoing the house. Right. But she does all the talking. He just sits. If she needs something, he goes to get it. Right. Kind of like Mr. Sith. And then Mr. Sith was sitting next to him. So it was perfect. So they started talking. And of course, naturally, he's an IT. <laughs> so there was that little bond. Right. So just the quiet IT guy. And the, and the girl that talks up the table. So pretty much me and Mr. Sith, minus we were a little more low key than they were this particular event. Then you've got the family member who is either a distant family member or they ran out of table room at the family ones. So it's some random cousin who's super cool or a really good friend that you call a cousin and She's just gets along with everybody. She's friendly. She talks to everybody. She really likes the neighbor. She's talking to me. And then she also takes on the role of the caretaker. Because we are going to finish the table out. Because there is never a wedding without the person who's the overboard person. And that's who was sitting next to the cousin and the single lady enjoying her time there. The too much person. What's the too much person, you ask? The too much person is a great person. She's there by herself. She's the bride's oldest friend. Grammar school stories. Every time somebody, the bride comes to the table to talk to anybody but her, if you look back at her, she's glaring a hole in the back of your head. It's, it's unintentional because she's completely wasted. She started off bringing two drinks to the table. And then she refilled that with another two drinks. And then they brought salad. So she ate a cucumber, two pieces of bread, went back to the bar and brought back four drinks and a shot. This is just for her. <laughs> this is the one who drinks out of social anxiety. There's one at every wedding. She's looking around. If you just watch her, she looks uncomfortable in her own body. And she did. At one point, I felt like she was hyperventilating. Her eyes are done. She's already reddening. She's getting a little sweaty. Her necklace is flipped and it's backwards. But she's she's in, she's going to have the best time ever because my friend that I've known from childhood's getting married twice now. I don't know if this woman's been married before, but you can tell that she really struggled with being there. She had a great time and she certainly used up what Mr. Sith and I didn't drink at the bar. You know what I'm saying? I would say even when dinner came, she only ate, she got the fish option and she only ate the fish. She left everything there. And then the cousin who was the caretaker ordered another bread basket and put that in front of her. So she started ripping off pieces of bread and eating that. Soak that alcohol up, sister. Um, then after the toast, which was awesome. Okay. It was very delightful. It didn't matter that I didn't know him or the maid of honor because they spoke and addressed the crowd in a way that made everyone feel like they were a part of the situation, which is how it should be, okay? It was humorous and heartfelt 
and it was really nice. So he had mentioned during his speech that like if you wanted some extra stories on the side, you could go to the basically Christian divorce group table and they could give you tons of stories. It wasn't three seconds before all that ended, before she jumped up to go over there and hear all the stories, all the while drinking some more. She was the best watch at this party. Outside of the table to my left, like up against the window, um, like towards the back of the, uh, not towards the parking lot, in case Michelle's listening, I'm trying to give her clues. Um, I believe it was um, Randy's brother. His wife looks like Aquafina. <laughs> I couldn't stop staring at her. She probably thinks I'm weird. Um, but she looks like a young, like like Aquafina. If you don't know who I am, you need to Google Aquafina. She does tons of like Disney stuff and and all sorts of like voices. But she's done movies too. But I I love her, and I think she's very pretty. But let me tell you, she looked like Aquafina. And then of course I leaned over to Mister Sith and I'm like, um, the lady that I think is with the groom's brother. Or the you know the, the, the that is the groom's brother, um his his wife I think, um she looks like Aquafina and then of course Mr. Sith went who's Aquafina and I had to bring up the picture and be like you know like the dragon from Mariah and the Dragon and and then, you know, uh Jurassic uh, not Jurassic uh Jumanji, I'm like remember Next Level, the thief, and he was like. Oh yeah, she does look like her. I'm like, <laughs> like, see? I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, it, it was just, it was so fun. And to finally like meet the brides, both the thing, I will tell you that I found out that um, the too much gal, she actually had a ride home that night. Thank you, Jesus. Because there's no reason, like I, I don't understand how. She must have felt like shit the next day unless she got up and immediately started downing uh, some mimosas or some Bloody Marys, period. The only relief for a hangover like that. When you're mixing, when you're drinking three different kinds of wines, hard drinks and shots, you're going to feel like shit the next day, my friend. Um, I'm glad I don't do any of that crap anymore. We had a delightful time. I can't even tell you I love people watching. I can do it all day. I can do it anywhere in the world. I love it. I hope people watch me. I hope I am giving you a show because there's nothing worse than watching people and they don't do nothing. Like, what the fuck? Why are you just sitting there? So I'm hoping that somebody was watching me at the wedding and being like, her and her husband are totally people watching and hitting up this whole wedding doing that. And I'm like, yes, sister, I am. Um, but it was really a lot of fun. That is what happened at the wedding. That is my school bus social media story. Um, I am feeling much better. A lot of people are sending messages about that. Thank you for always asking how I am. Um, I had three flares going at once. I had the uh, lupus was going for like a month. For a fucking month. Like before we went on vacation, I'm like, hey, lupus, lay the fuck off, bitch. I'm done with you. Then that triggered my rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm like, huh, psh, you know, and then, you know, so they're not left out. I had a mesenteric paniculitis flare. Just Google it. It's really fucking rare. There's like 200 people in the world who have it. Yay, lucky me. I can't win the lottery, but I win the autoimmune lottery. Um, I have not had a flare in 11 years. And it put me in the hospital for five days. And I thought, you know what? What did they do that time? They restricted what I was doing, what I was eating, and they gave me pain meds. Well, fuck the pain meds. I don't want pain meds. I want to feel it so I know when it's going away. You get really bloated um, it, and like hard bloated. It's fucking horrible. It has recited so much. So I think I'm finally done with the mesenteric paniculitis has made its appearance. The jealousy is gone. Hopefully I don't see that motherfucker for another 11 years. But um, I just have a little bit of RA soreness right now which I'm okay. I think the lupus is like, you know, finally like decided she's going to take a fucking rest. And uh, so I'm feeling way better. I did a cleanse all this week, um, five days of, uh, it's called a latte cleanse from Lemon Kind. Um, 
I like the company and it's clean and it's vegan. So, uh, and then I get to eat as well. So boom, right. If you're going to do a cleanse, like don't just like fucking drink water. And I mean, I guess you can do that, but I have autoimmune, so I can't do that shit. So, um, I feel so much better. And, uh, Mr. Sith and I have a new path with respects to getting like, uh, some exercise in cause he, can I just tell you, he was fixing something on it, on the fridge. He was replacing the filter for the water, right? And the ice cubes. And so I smelled something in my fridge. If I talked about this already, like on Wednesday, I'm fucking sorry. So jump in again. Here's the story. So you already know how it ends, but you don't know how it ends because it's still fucking going on. Um, but when I opened the fridge, it felt like something died in there, but a vegetable. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a meat. It was a vegetable and then sometimes dairy all of it smells different when it goes bad but I clean out my fridge every week so I was like what the hell could be smelling in there because I literally go through my door and I look at like sauces and condiments and shit too so I'm always cleaning it out there's never shit in my fridge that's old I mean once in a while something will pass through because just as ex- just because it's expired doesn't mean it's not any good Especially if you bought shit and it's chocked full of preservatives, it's fucking fine, right? Like mayo, shit like that, right? I mean, don't eat mayo that's been out, you know what I'm saying? But I don't even use mayo. Like every now and then I buy a small thing of Dukes when I make like a salad or something. Like a like a creamy salad, like a chicken salad or something. That's the only fucking time I do it, period. Um, but I, so I went through the whole thing. I was sniffing everything because I have such a strong nose. And the fact that... I could smell it was driving me nuts. And then, then Carl, right? Mr. Sith is like, oh, I smell it too. Oh, you guys, it looks like little Lulu's making an appearance too. So that's Natalia's dog. I don't know if it'll pick up. So now you guys have heard everybody because Sheikah's probably sleeping in the fucking living room. And I know you guys all love when you hear the dog. So there you go. You're welcome. Anyway, um, so I was like, what are we going to do? Like, I can't get rid of this smell. I, I've done so. Then Natalia came down. She's got a nose like I do, and she was like, "Well, I'll smell like I'll smell everything." So I got her smelling the meal kits. I got her smelling everything, right? And she's just like, "Yeah, I don't smell it, but it smells like what is going on?" So I tell Carl, and he comes home, and he's just like, "Oh, you know what? Um, let me pull out the fridge and like maybe clean the back and see if stuff fell." You know, so he does that and turns out we got a fucking drip pan. Nobody told me I had a fucking drip pan. I- I've lived here seven years. Nobody's ever told me about a drip pan. I always rented before this. So I don't know. I never changed a drip pan while I rented. What the hell? It is fucking full. It is overflowing. We have hard water. It is slimy. It's got deposits in it. I'm like, Bleh. then I'm thinking, oh shit. So then Mr. Sith finds out that it's got little holes underneath in it. It's it's cracked in a couple places. So I'm like, well, now we know why the floorboard warped. Like, and he's like, oh yeah, now we know. So I was able to buy a replacement part. So we have that and he has to put it back in. He changed the filter. He cleaned the whole fridge out. We cleaned the drip tray, but the new one has to go in. But now we know, right? But it smells still like people. I am opening my fridge. And then when I close it, I shake up a bottle of poopery. If you don't know about poopery, where have you fucking been? I live by the shit. Okay. No pun intended. I even carry it with me. I always have some in my purse. And you know that because if you have autoimmune you never know when your colon is going to be like, yeah, we're going to do this now. And I'm like, but I'm picking up fucking vegetables. And they're like, nope, we're doing this now. Five, four. That's what your colon does when you have autoimmune. And then you just got to tear your ass to the bathroom. And just in case I don't like to leave it unpleasant. So I carry poopery. There you go. I am a polite pooper. Anyway. So that's probably TMI, but whatever. That's the whole fucking point of coffee talk, right? So I spray it every time I open. I have not smelled it lately. I should ask Natalia to fucking smell it because I have not smelled it the last couple days, which is a good thing. But we already decided that we were going to, um, uh, we were going to pull out, put in the new tray this weekend or tonight. I don't know what the hell he's doing, Um, but when he replaces the new tray and 
he's going to, it, it, there's insulation in the fridge. So I told him to buy, I bought this like um, Ozium. I don't know what the hell. It it kills like stuff, but at the same time, it, it also like kills bacteria. Because we think as the tray was overflowing, it was seeping up in, and that, that it's in the insulation. So I was like, dude, until it dries out, I mean, when it dries out, is it still going to fucking smell? God, I hope not. But I don't think it did. But just in case, we're going to spray the osium all in the insulation. I don't really give a shit. That's what we're doing. Because I cannot stand the smell. So now I feel like I need to hurry up, wrap up this thing, and have Natalia smell my fridge. There we go. Um, my niece turned 20. Happy birthday. At the time I'm recording this, it is her birthday. Um, and uh, that's about it. She's 20. I have a 20 year old niece and I don't know how old her brother is. I think he's like 24 or some shit. What the hell, man? I told my sister she was officially getting old because she has two kids who are in her fucking twenties. Ah, whatever. Um, that's all I got. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. I hope you guys have a fabulous Saturday and until next week, leave with kindness. Bye.